This is section 14 of The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Trimmer's Opinion in Relation to Things Abroad, read by John Greenman. The world is so composed that it is hard, if not impossible, for a nation not to be a great deal involved in the fate of their neighbors and though by the felicity of our situation we are more independent than any other people yet we have in all ages been concerned for our own sakes in the revolutions abroad there was a time when england was the overbalancing power of christendom and that either by inheritance or conquest the better part of france received laws from us after that we being reduced into our own limits france and spain became the rivals for the universal monarchy and our third power though in itself less than either of the other happened to be superior to any of them by that choice we had of throwing the scales on that side to which we gave our friendship i do not know whether this figure did not make us as great as our former conquest to be a perpetual umpire of two great contending powers who gave us all their courtship and offered all their incense at our altar whilst the fate of either prince seemed to depend upon the oracles we delivered for the king of england to sit on his throne as in the supreme court of justice to which the two great monarchs appeal pleading their cause and expecting their sentence declaring which side was in the right or at least if we pleased which side should have the better of it was a piece of greatness which was peculiar to us and no wonder if we endeavored to preserve it as we did for a considerable time it being our safety as well as glory to maintain it but by a fatality upon our counsels or by the refined policy of this latter age we have thought fit to use industry to destroy this mighty power which we have so long enjoyed and that equality between the two monarchs which we might for ever have preserved hath been chiefly broken by us whose interest it was above all others to maintain it when one of them like the overflowing of the sea had gained more upon the other than our convenience or indeed our safety would allow instead of mending the banks or making new ones we ourselves with our own hands helped to cut them to invite and make way for a farther inundation france and spain have had their several turns in making use of our mistakes and we have been formerly as deaf to the instances of the then weaker part of the world to help them against the house of austria as we can now be to the earnestness of spain that we would assist them against the power of france gondomar was as saucy and as powerful too in king james his court as any french ambassador can have been at any time since men talked as wrong then on the spanish side and made their court by it as well as any can have done since by talking as much for the french so that from that time instead of weighing in a wise balance the power of either crown it looketh as if we had learned only to weigh the pensions and take the heaviest it would be tedious as well as unwelcome to recapitulate all wrong steps so that i will go no farther than the king's restoration at which time the balance was on the side of france and that by the means of cromwell who for a separate interest of his own had sacrificed that of the nation by joining with the stronger side to suppress the power of spain which he ought to have supported such a method was natural enough to an usurper and showed he was not the lawful father of the people by his having so little care of them and the example coming from that hand one would think should for that reason be less likely to be followed but to go on home cometh the king followed with courtships from all nations abroad of which some did it not only to make them forget how familiarly they had used him when he was in other circumstances but to bespeak the friendship of a prince who besides his other greatness 
was yet more considerable by being re-established by the love of his people france had an interest either to dispose us to so much good will or at least to put us into such a condition that we might give no opposition to their designs and flanders being a perpetual object in their eye a lasting beauty for which they have an incurable passion and not being kind enough to consent to them they meditated to commit a rape upon her which they thought would not be easy to do while england and holland were agreed to rescue her whenever they should hear her cry out for help to them to this end they put in practice seasonable and artificial whispers to widen things between us and the states and boina and the fishery must be talked of here the freedom of the seas and the preservation of trade must be insinuated there and there being combustible matter on both sides in a little time it took fire which gave those that kindled it sufficient cause to smile and hug themselves to see us both fall into the net they had laid for us and it is observable and of good example to us if we will take it that their design being to set us together at cuffs to weaken us they kept themselves lookers-on till our victories began to break the balance then the king of france like a wise prince was resolved to support the beaten side and would no more let the power of the sea than we ought to suffer the monarchy of europe to fall into one hand in pursuance to this he took part with the dutch and in a little time made himself umpire the peace between us some time after upon pretence of his queen's title to part of flanders by right of devolution he falleth into it with a mighty force for which the spaniard was so little prepared that he made a very swift progress and had such a torrent of undisputed victory that england and holland though the wounds they had given one another were yet green being struck with the apprehension of so near a danger to them thought it necessary for their own defence to make up a sudden league into which sweden was taken to interpose for a peace between the two crowns this had so good an effect that france was stopped in its career and the peace of aix la chapelle was a little after concluded twas a forced put and though france wisely dissembled their inward dissatisfaction yet from that very moment they resolved to untie the triple knot whatever it cost them for his christian majesty after his conquering meals ever riseth with a stomach and he liked the pattern so well that it gave him a longing desire to have the whole piece amongst the other means used for the attaining this end the sending over the duchess of orleans was not the least powerful she was a very welcome guest here and her own charms and dexterity joined with other advantages that might help her persuasions gave her such an ascendant that she should hardly fail of success one of the preliminaries of her treaty though a trivial thing in itself yet was considerable in the consequence as very small circumstances often are in relation to the government of the world about this time a general humor in opposition to france had made us throw off their fashion and put on vests that we might look more like a distinct people and not be under the servility of imitation which ever payeth a greater deference to the original than is consistent with the equality all independent nations should pretend to france did not like this small beginning of ill-humours at least of emulation and wisely considering that it is a natural introduction first to make the world their apes that they may be afterwards their slaves it was thought that one of the instructions madame brought along with her was to laugh us out of these vests which she performed so effectually that in a moment like so many footmen who had quitted their master's livery we all took it again and returned to our old service so that the very time of doing it gave a very critical advantage to france since it looked like an evidence of our returning to their interest as well as to their fashion 
and would give such a distrust of us to our new allies that it might facilitate the dissolution of the knot which tied them so within their bounds that they were very impatient till they were freed from the restraint but the lady had a more extended commission than this and without doubt laid the foundation of a new strict alliance quite contrary to the other in which we had been so lately engaged and of this there were such early appearances that the world began to look upon us as falling into apostasy from the common interest notwithstanding all this france did not neglect at the same time to give good words to the dutch and even to feed them with hopes of supporting them against us when on a sudden that never to be forgotten declaration of war against them cometh out only to vindicate his own glory and to revenge the injuries done to his brother in england by which he became our second in this duel so humble can this prince be when at the same time he doth us more honour than we deserve he layeth a greater share of the blame upon our shoulders than did naturally belong to us the particulars of that war our part in it while we stayed in it and when we were out of breath our leaving the french to make an end of it are things too well known to make it necessary and too unwelcome in themselves to incite me to repeat them only the wisdom of france is in this to be observed that when we had made a separate peace which left them single to oppose the united force of the confederates they were so far from being angry that they would not show so much as the least coldness hoping to get as much by our mediation for a peace as they would have expected from our assistance in the war our circumstances at that time considered this seasonable piece of indulgence in not reproaching us but rather allowing those necessities of state which we gave for our excuse was such an engaging method that it went a great way to keep us still in their chains when to the eye of the world we had absolutely broke loose from them and by what passed afterwards at nijmegen though the king's neutrality gave him the outward figure of a mediator it appeared that his interposition was extremely suspected of partiality by the confederates who upon that ground did both at and before the conclusion of that treaty treat his ministers there with a great deal of neglect in this piece as well as in that of the pyrenean and the aix la chapelle the king of france at the moment of making it had the thought of breaking it for a very little time after he broached his pretensions upon a lost which were things that if they had been offered by a less formidable hand would have been smiled at but ill arguments being seconded by good armies carry such a power with them that naked sense is a very unequal adversary it was thought that these airy claims were chiefly raised with the prospect of getting luxembourg for the equivalent and this opinion was confirmed by the blocking it up afterwards pretending to the country of chimay that it might be entirely surrounded by the french dominions and it was so pressed that it might have fallen in a little time if the king of france had not sent orders to his troops to retire and his christian generosity which was assigned for the reason of it made the world smile since it is seen how differently his devout zeal worketh in hungary that specious reason was in many respects ill-timed and france itself gave it so faintly that at the very time it looked out of countenance the true ground of his retiring is worth our observation for at the instance of the confederates offices were done and memorials given but all ineffectual till the word parliament was put into them that powerful word had such an effect that even at that distance it raised the siege which may convince us of what efficacy the king of england's words are when he will give them their full weight and threaten with his parliament it is then that he appeareth that great figure we ought to represent him in our minds the nation his body he the head and joined with that harmony that every word he pronounceth is the word of a kingdom such words as appeareth by this example are as effectual as fleets and armies 
because they can create them and without this his words sound abroad like a faint whisper that is either not heard or which is worse not minded but though france had made this step of forced compliance it did not mean to leave off the pursuit of their pretensions and therefore immediately proposed the arbitration to the king but it appeared that notwithstanding his merit towards the confederates in saving luxembourg the remembrances of what had passed before had left such an ill taste in their mouths that they could not relish our being put into a condition to dispose of their interests and therefore declined it by insisting upon a general treaty to which france had ever since continued to be averse our great earnestness also to persuade the confederates to consent to it was so unusual and so suspicious a method that it might naturally make them believe that france spake to them by our mouth and for that reason if there had been no other might hinder the accepting it and so little care hath been taken to cure this or other jealousies the confederates may have entertained that quite contrary their ministers here every day take fresh alarms from what they observe in small as well as in greater circumstances and they being apt both to take and improve apprehensions of this kind draw such inferences from them as make them entirely despair of us thus we now stand far from being innocent spectators of our neighbor's ruin and by a fatal mistake forgetting what a certain forerunner it is to our own and now it is time our trimmer should tell something of his opinion upon this present state of things abroad he first professeth to have no bias either for or against france and that his thoughts are wholly directed by the interest of his own country he alloweth and hath read that spain used the same methods when it was in its height as france doth now and therefore it is not partiality that moveth him but the just fear which all reasonable men must be possessed with of an overgrowing power ambition is a devouring beast when it hath swallowed one province instead of being cloyed it hath so much of the greater stomach to another and being fed becometh still the more hungry so that for the confederates to expect a security from any thing but their own united strength is a most miserable fallacy and if they cannot resist the encroachments of france by their arms it is in vain for them to dream of any other means of preservation it would have the better grace besides the saving so much blood and ruin to give up all at once make a present of themselves to appease this haughty monarch rather than be whispered flattered or cozened out of their liberty nothing is so soft as the first applications of a greater prince to engage a weaker but that smiling countenance is but a vizard it is not the true face for as soon as their turn is served the courtship flies to some other prince or state where the same part is to be acted over again leaveth the old mistaken friend to neglect and contempt and like an insolent lover to a cast-off mistress reproaches her with that infamy of which he himself was the author sweden bavaria palatine etc may by their fresh examples teach other princes what they are reasonably to expect and what snakes are hid under the flowers the court of france so liberally throweth upon them whilst they can be useful the various methods and deep intrigues with the differing notes in several countries do not only give suspicion but assurance that everything is put in practice by which universal monarchy may be obtained who can reconcile the withdrawing of his troops from luxembourg in consideration of the war in hungary which was not then declared and presently after encouraging the turk to take vienna and consequently to destroy the empire or who would think that the persecution of the poor protestants of france will be accepted by god as an atonement for hazarding the loss of the whole christian faith can he be thought in earnest 
when he seemed to be afraid of the spaniards and for that reason must have luxembourg and that he cannot be safe from germany unless he is in possession of strasbourg all injustice and violence must in itself be grievous but the aggravation of supporting him by false arguments and insulting reasons has something in it yet more provoking than the injuries themselves and the world hath ground enough to apprehend from such a method of arguing that even their senses are to be subdued as well as their liberties then the variety of arguments used by france in several countries is very observable in england and denmark nothing insisted on but the greatness and authority of the crown on the other side the great men in poland are commended who differ in opinion with the king and they argue like friends to the privilege of the diet against the separate power of the crown in sweden they are troubled that the king should have changed something there of late by his single authority from the ancient and settled authority and constitutions at Ratisbon, the most christian majesty taketh the liberties of all the electors and free states into his protection and telleth them the emperor is a dangerous man an aspiring hero that would infallibly devour them if he was not at hand to resist him on their behalf but above all in holland he hath the most obliging tenderness for the commonwealth and is in such disquiets lest it should be invaded by the prince of orange that they can do no less in gratitude than undo themselves when he bids them to show how sensible they are of his excessive good nature yet in spite of all these contradictions there are in the world such refined statesmen as will upon their credit affirm the following paradoxes to be real truth first that france alone is sincere and keepeth its faith and consequently that it is the only friend we can rely upon that the king of france of all men living hath the least mind to be a conqueror that he is a sleepy tame creature void of all ambition a poor kind of a man that hath no farther thoughts than to be quiet that he is charmed by his friendship to us that it is impossible he should ever do us hurt and therefore though flanders was lost it would not in the least concern us that he would fain help the crown of england to be absolute which would be to take pains to put it into a condition to oppose him as it is and must be our interest as long as he continueth in such an overbalancing power and greatness such a creed as this if once received might prepare our belief for greater things and as he that taught men to eat a dagger began first with a penknife so if we can be prevailed with to digest the smaller mistakes we may at last make our stomach strong enough for that of transubstantiation our trimmer cannot easily be converted out of his senses by these state sophisters and yet he hath no such peevish obstinacy as to reject all correspondence with france because we ought to be apprehensive of the too great power of it he would not have the king's friendship to the confederates extended to the involving him in any unreasonable or dangerous engagements neither would he have him lay aside the consideration of his better establishment at home out of his excessive zeal to secure his allies abroad but sure there might be a mean between these two opposite extremes and it may be wished that our friendship with france should at least be so bounded that it may consist with the humour as well as the interest of england there is no woman but hath her fears of contracting too near an intimacy with a much greater beauty because it exposeth her too often to a comparison that is not advantageous to her and sure it may become a prince to be as jealous of his dignity as a lady can be of her good looks and to be as much out of countenance to be thought an humble companion to so much a greater power to be always seen in an ill light to be so darkened by the brightness of a greater star is somewhat mortifying 
and when england might ride admiral at the head of the confederates to look like the kitching yacht to the grand louis is but a scurvy figure for us to make in the map of christendom it would rise upon our trimmer's stomach if ever which god forbid the power of calling and intermitting parliaments here should be transferred to the crown of france and that all the opportunities of our own settlements at home should give way to their projects abroad and that our interests should be so far sacrificed to our compliance that all the omnipotence of france can never make us full amends for it in the meantime he shrinketh at the dismal prospect he can by no means drive away from his thoughts that when france hath gathered all the fruit arising from our mistakes and that we can bear no more with them they will cut down the tree and throw it into the fire all this while some superfine statesmen to comfort us would fain persuade the world that this or that accident may save us and for all that is or ought to be dear to us would have us to rely wholly upon chance not considering that fortune is wisdom's creature and that god almighty loves to be on the wisest as well as the strongest side therefore this is such a miserable shift such a shameful evasion that they would be laughed to death for it if the ruining consequence of this mistake did not more dispose men to rage and a detestation of it our trimmer is far from idolatry in other things in one thing only he cometh near it his country is in some degree his idol he doth not worship the sun because tis not peculiar to us it rambles about the world and is less kind to us than others but for the earth of england though perhaps inferior to that of many places abroad to him there is divinity in it and he would rather die than see a spire of english grass trampled down by a foreign trespasser he thinketh there are a great many of his mind for all plants are apt to taste of the soil in which they grow and we that grow here have a root that produceth in us a stalk of english juice which is not to be changed by grafting or foreign infusion and i do not know whether anything less will prevail than the modern experiment by which the blood of one creature is transmitted into another according to which before the french blood can be let into our bodies every drop of our own must be drawn out of them our trimmer cannot but lament that by a sacrifice too great for one nation to make to another we should be like a rich mine made useless only for want of being wrought and that the life and vigor which should move us against our enemies is miserably applied to tear our own bowels that being made by our happy situation not only safer but if we please greater too than other countries which far exceed us in extent that having courage by nature learning by industry and riches by trade we should corrupt all these advantages so as to make them insignificant and by a fatality which seemeth peculiar to us misplace our active rage one against another whilst we are turned into statues on that side where lieth our greatest danger to be unconcerned not only at our neighbor's ruin but our own and let our island lie like a great hulk in the sea without rudder or sail all the men cast away in her or as if we were all children in a great cradle and rocked asleep to a foreign tune i say when our trimmer representeth to his mind our roses blasted and discolored whilst the lilies triumph and grow insolent upon the comparison when he considereth our own once flourishing laurel now withered and dying and nothing left us but a remembrance of a better part in history than we shall make in the next age which will be no more to us than an escutcheon hung upon our door when we are dead when he foreseeth from hence growing infamy from abroad 
confusion at home and all this without the possibility of a cure in respect of the voluntary fetters good men put upon themselves by their allegiance without a good measure of preventing grace he would be tempted to go out of the world like a roman philosopher rather than endure the burden of life under such a discouraging prospect but mistakes as all other things have their periods and many times the nearest way to cure is not to oppose them but stay till they are crushed with their own weight for nature will not allow anything to continue long that is violent violence is a wound and as a wound must be curable in a little time or else tis mortal but a nation comes near to be immortal therefore the wound will one time or another be cured though perhaps by such rough methods if too long forborne as may even make the best remedies we can prepare to be at the same time a melancholy contemplation to us there is but one thing god almighty's providence excepted to support a man from sinking under these afflicting thoughts and that is the hopes we draw singly from the king himself without the mixture of any other consideration though the nation was lavish of their kindness to him at his first coming yet there remaineth still a stock of warmth in men's hearts for him besides the good influences of his happy planet are not yet all spent and though the stars of men past their youth are generally declining and have less force like the eyes of decaying beauties yet by a blessing peculiar to himself we may yet hope to be saved by his autumnal fortune he hath something about him that will draw down a healing miracle for his and our deliverance a prince which seemeth fitted for such an offending age in which men's crimes have been so general that the not forgiving his people had been the destroying of them whose gentleness giveth him a natural dominion that hath no bounds with such a noble mixture of greatness and condescension an engaging look that disarmeth men of their ill humours and their resentments something in him that wanteth a name and can be no more defined than it can be resisted a gift of heaven of its lasting finishing where it will be peculiarly kind the only prince in the world that dares be familiar or that hath right to triumph over those forms which were first invented to give awe to those who could not judge and to hide defects from those that could a prince that hath exhausted himself by his liberality and endangered himself by his mercy who outshineth by his own light and natural virtues all the varnish of studied acquisitions his faults are like shades to a good picture or like allay to gold to make it the more useful he may have some but for any man to see them through so many reconciling virtues is a sacrilegious piece of ill-nature of which no generous mind can be guilty a prince that deserveth to be loved for his own sake even without the help of a comparison our love our duty and our danger all join to cement our obedience to him in short whatever he can do it is no more possible for us to be angry with him than with the bank that secureth us from the raging sea the kind shade that hideth us from the scorching sun the welcome hand that reacheth us a reprieve or with the guardian angel that rescueth our souls from the devouring jaws of wretched eternity end of the trimmer's opinion in relation to things abroad read by john greenman